as a surgeon, there's nothing more devastating than being in an operating room and having to replace a piece of tissue or an organ and not having one to replace it with or not having the ideal treatment. And you know you're not doing the right thing by doing that, but it's your only choice. And so for us to actually uh, place these tissues and organs and to create them outside in the laboratory and to have them available would be a really good option uh, for some patients. And that's uh, what inspired our work. You know, uh, innovation has always been present in, in this field, dating back to the early days of just the concept of getting it done. But it's really interesting, you know, innovation occurs when the science have, has actually gotten to a certain point where the breakthroughs can occur. You know, and, and so what we have done uh, is basically anytime we, we saw a barrier, we had to find major ways to get around it. You know, and it's not till you get to that barrier when you start thinking about how to get around the barrier. So the first step to innovation is really just to try. Because if you don't try, you'll never find a solution. One of the most important things that I think uh, is related to innovation is to just not accept the, uh, the accepted truths of the field. Because what happens is those accepted truths were true when the science was not yet that advanced. So you have to keep re-examining the questions that you look at given the new tools that you have at your disposal. I think it's extremely important for innovators to be able to protect their work. Uh, first of all, uh, there's the issue of putting a stake in the ground that this is the work you've done. And to, this work actually allows others to know what has happened. And it allows them to go after new inventions and make new advances as well. The second thing is that if you are able to have the intellectual property at hand, it allows others to really make an investment. And if you don't have that investment, if, uh, the technology will never be transferred. So people will invest in the technology if they know it's protected, because they need to know that their investment is safe and sound. Literally it takes hundreds of millions of dollars to really create these technologies so they could disseminate it to the public. Uh, individuals need to know that they're going to get a return on their investment for these technologies to be used. And therefore, if we really want to see these technologies used in patients, you need to have the intellectual protection. There's so many things out there that are really good technologies that because they didn't have adequate intellectual property, no one ever invested in them and they never reach the public. So at the end of the day, it's not a question of whether we need intellectual property. It's a question is can we afford not to have it because it can impact patients' lives. The technologies depend on having intellectual property protection. We are focused on making sure that we create the best technologies that are going to be transformative for our patients and are going to improve the patients' lives. And if that is true, if we are in fact able to create technologies which are transformational and that will make patients better, then healthcare providers by default will want to use that technology because it is transformational and, and the difference is much higher than another technology. It all starts and ends with having a technology that is transformational for our patients.